This is your host, Bill Culp. But you know the premise of this show. Quite simply, we get to know those who are working in your school district every day. Why does it matter? Not only because you matter, but they also matter. So joining us today is Dr. McCoy. How are you doing there, Dr. McCoy? Hi, I'm doing very well, Bill. All right, see why you're asking why I'm dressed up? Because I noticed one of the things there, Dr. McCoy, you were in the Air Force, yes. right? Yes. That's kind of like third, you know, third because you think Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine. So talk about that. How cool was that to be in the Air Force? Well, at the time, <laughs> um, I didn't think it was so cool. Um, <laughs> it was a lot of work. And my husband and I were stationed in bases at bases that were not all that great. Up the northern tier, Grand Forks, North Dakota, cold, cold places. Um, but I served six years. And... Um, one of the places that I served was off at Air Force Base in Nebraska, which was headquarters Strategic Air Command. So I had a top secret clearance and I would go way down in a bunker uh, to do my job. And, you know, when I think back on it now, it was it was interesting times. And um, I was able to buy back that service for my, nice. my pension down the road, which is also nice. So it's kind of still paying off my top time in the Air Force. Information. Top secret information. Yeah, that's like unbelievable. Yeah. So are you ticklish? Can we get it out of you? <laughs> I am. I am. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, because that would be pretty good. you got to try your friends, probably try to get that information. That's pretty neat being in a bunker and things like that. So quite an experience coming from there uh, into the classroom. So what made you want to come into the classroom? What was, the, what was that change? Well, even before I went into the Air Force, I thought that I wanted to be a teacher. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes life throws you curves. And mm -hmm. um, so when I got out of the Air Force, I was a stay-at-home mom. And then... I went to school in the evening. Um, or scientists used to have an evening division school. So I went to school at night while I was home with the children and um, took all the classes that I needed and eventually ended up at Westchester to get my teaching certification. And nice. um, yeah, I started out over at the middle school and ended up, I've been here at Brooks since the year 2000. Yeah, so I was gonna ask you, I mean, so, so you went to your sinus, got your degree from there because I saw some of your colleagues coming in. I already know you're a bright cookie. They're like, that's a smart cookie. I saw Miss D'Angelo and she was like, she's a bright cookie. I said, your sign is she's got to be a bright cookie. So yeah, so just kind of reiterate, you, you came here to Springford. So how many years have you been here? What have you been teaching since then? Um, I started subbing at Springford in 96. Mm -hmm. I got my contract in 98 and um, I put in for a position. Um, Mark Moyer was going from social studies, sixth grade social studies, to being a principal. And I thought I would love that job. And I put in for it. And uh, Bill Marion at the time said to me, um, well, we think you would do well in that position, but uh, Leslie Rufo wants that position. <laughs> and But she's teaching gifted kids. What do you think about that instead? And I said, I'll, I'll take it. And I love that job a lot. Nice. But then they cut the position. Uh, and that's how I ended up over here. But my kids, I used to live in Abbey Downs. Yeah. And when this was um, K through five building, my kids were walkers. So I still knew a lot of the teachers here at Brook and coming to Brook was just like coming home to yeah. family. Yeah. Um, so I had to make an adjustment going from six, seven, eight down to fourth grade. But once I made the adjustment, I just absolutely love this grade love level. It. That's awesome. It is. It's a fun grade. So uh, I noticed you're local from Collegeville, yes. correct? All right. So you grew up around here. Uh, so not too far from home. So you kind of in your in in house yes. uh, here in this and that. So your parents uh, and you had. Did you have any brothers, sisters, or my one brother, Fred? Uh, he lives in York, mm -hmm. and we're in contact a lot because uh, my mother passed away in 2006. Mm -hmm. My dad's 89, and he lives with me and my husband yeah, um, and our two dogs. Uh, but you know, <laughs> there's there's issues that come up when your dad's that age. So my hus uh, my brother is at the house quite a bit. Uh, to help me with different things, the decisions that we have to make for doctors, for my for my dad, things like that. That's neat. All right, so you have, and you said you have two kids. I have two. What are they two. doing? Yes, Danny lives in Virginia, um, and uh, he's married to a divorce lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> that takes courage, right? That's all right, yeah. Uh, they have two kids, and my daughter, Colleen, um, she lives in Royers Ford. And they're, um, they have two kids also. Benjamin is a kindergartner over at Royers Ford Elementary this year. Nice. So, yeah, I'm, I feel, very, very much feel part of this community. So you and, mentioned that you like to be with your grandkids and things like that. So what are some other things outside of school? Because, you know, I always kid around, especially in elementary, the kids think we sleep here. Yes. We don't sleep here. So what do you like to do besides spend time with the grandkids and things like that? Um, I like... 
like to, um, uh, when, there's not as many good movies out that I would, I mean, I, I'm always looking for a certain kind of movie, um, but I love to uh, go to the Colonial Theater in Phoenixville yeah. because I think it's just so old school and I just want to support that. <laughs> I'd rather go there than like say the Regal in Oaks, right? Yeah, got you. Um, I, love, I love a good bargain, so I love to go to the Goodwill over in Trap and mm -hmm. come home and show off what I found to my <laughs> husband and say, and it's always, guess how much I paid for this? So I, you know, he just sits there and rolls his eyes. You ever find anything good at the Goodwill? Like what's probably like the greatest thing you've ever... Was there anything valuable or just something that maybe was important to you? Well, it's it's nice when you can go in there and you can find, which, you know, you wouldn't understand, but, like, you you find, like, a name brand piece of clothing. Yeah. Like, like, Talbot's is considered very expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, the fancy stores at the King of Prussia Plaza in court. And you go in there and you find something that's very, very lightly used, and you look at it and it fits you perfectly, yeah. and you run out and you only spend $3 <laughs> for it. That just makes my day. <laughs> I love that. All right. So one of the things I like, uh, what do you love about teaching? You, you mentioned a few things. And, um, and I I liked it. I love I, I love just about everything except the paperwork. Um, I don't and nobody likes paperwork, right? <laughs> um, the thing I love the most about it is I love to do read alouds. I know, and at the very end of the day, it really motivates the kids to pack up quickly and quietly because they want to hear me read. I read from the Lemony Snicket series of yeah. unfortunate mm -hmm. events. And um, I love to do the voices, yeah. um, and I make the bad guy sound very scary, and um, <laughs> and and they just I, I just feel that in fourth grade I want them to learn to love reading since yeah. a lot of them have the mechanics, uh, the phonics, and all of that. Mm -hmm. They understand that now. I want them to, you know, be flashlight under the cover readers. No, you you kind of set me up. See, I brought one of my favorite books. All right, the true story of the three little pigs, and I you know I got that little theater background, so I always like to. Uh, read also. So I'm going to give you a page here and see how well uh, you do right here. If you can read, you can add a little voice if you want to. Let's see how good she is. Now, is the person that I'm, when I say I, is this a good person, a good guy or a bad the, guy? That's the wolf, but he's technically a good person. He, he is a good, he's a good yeah, person. Yeah, he's, he's a, a smart good guy, as you see on the front. Uh, I was feeling a little better, but I still didn't have my cup of sugar, so I went to the next neighbor's house. This neighbor was the first little pig's brother. He was a little smarter, but not much. Mm. He had built his house of sticks. I rang the bell on the stick house. Nobody answered. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? He yelled back, go away, wolf. You can't come in. I'm shaving the hairs on my chinny chin chin. Love it. That's all you need. See, that's I like the voices too. I also noticed that one of the things you like to do, and you don't have to be ashamed to admit it, you like your karaoke. I do, I do. Um, that's why I brought the microphone. <laughs> and no. there's you love Steve Miller, so I want you to sing a little bit here. A little uh, Steve Miller. I put the lyrics on here for uh -oh. you. All right, the Joker. All right, so we're just gonna go past this little thing here. So as this comes up, and we are gonna skip the ads. And it's gonna lead you into karaoke. I think if you turn it sideways there, Doc. Some people call me the space cowboy, yeah. Some call me the gangster of love. Some people call me Maurice. Yeah. Woo! You're good. I speak <laughs> of the pompadous of love. <laughs> that was pretty good. I appreciate it. See, that thing. I didn't serious. expect that, Phil. No, that's why I brought it. I, you know, <laughs> sometimes you gotta do the unexpected, there, Doctor. That was awesome. Well, my so daughter you Colleen, go out and do whatever. Yeah, my daughter Colleen and my <laughs> daughter-in-law Cammy, uh, they love at the holidays when they come over and they they grab any kind of toy that the kids have and we put it, bring up the karaoke and start singing and you know, everybody just rolls their eyes because yeah. we're not that good. Yeah, but we don't that's care. okay. So, yeah. but you love the singing shows and all those. Oh, things. I like yeah, I like, yeah, the, like singing the voice shows. And, yes. and all that. That's great. Now, one of the neat things I saw, one of the unique facts also, John Lennon. Yes. So you got a autograph from John Lennon. So tell I brought us it. Over that. Did you? I brought it with me. Yes. Nice. Want to go get it? It's right here. Sure, go ahead. Go get it. Oh, mama. You might not leave with it there, McCoy. Everybody to, check my Facebook says page. Says to Kathy. And my eBay account. Ooh. Love John Lennon. He put the smiley face on there. He put the there. smiley face. So how'd you get this? My mom and dad uh, were in Manhattan at Gallagher Steakhouse. And they looked over and they saw John Lennon and Yoko Ono sitting at a booth. And my dad tipped 
um, the Mater D, so they could sit near them. <laughs> and my mother walked That's over and said, over. can you imagine John Lennon hearing this? My daughter really, really likes you. <laughs> I was a big fan. And <laughs> apparently when he was in a good mood, he would sign autographs. And then he'd put the smiley face on there. Yeah. Yeah, that's so. an original. That's awesome. You don't even know how much it's worth. I, I don't. I that's don't. good. I wouldn't even worry about that. So does the family fight over who's going to get that? Like they, the, sons, been, the son's like, I don't want the Christmas ornaments. I want the John Lennon. Yes. <laughs> there's, there's been some discussions over it. So. Uh, that's a great story. That's a, that's a really neat story. All right. So I just got one question before we end this. And I always like to end it with this. In so many years, you retired. Dr. McCoy retires. What do you want your legacy to be? And what do you want the kids to remember about you? What do you want them to say? Um, well, I think it's already started. Um, you know, uh, the, it wasn't that long ago I went into Wegmans and this woman looked like she was in her mid-twenties and she said, you know, Mrs. McCoy, she said, uh, <laughs> do you still do the read-alouds? And I said, yes. And she started talking about the, the books and the voices and how that made her love reading. Um, I run into people in the community that will tell me and they'll say, my child was not a reader and then they were, my child was with you and turned it around. And so that would be, that makes me very happy to mm. think that I affected a child like that because I think it is like throwing a, a stone into a pond. The ripple effect is that when you get one child to love reading, then that effect will affect their friends and their children mm -hmm. maybe someday, so. Well, you affected me. You made me smile today. Thanks for joining Thank us Thank you for there, coming. Dr. McCoy. Hey, you see her out there singing, maybe a karaoke. Join in. Don't go out of the house, though, and look for that John Lennon. <laughs> Signature. <laughs> She's probably got that in a safe place. Very safe. But very safe place. But we thank you for joining us today. Again, I'm your host, Bill Culp. Until next time, that's Staff Connections. Have a great night, everybody.